the word of God. 1 Samuel chapter number 17. 1 Samuel chapter number 17. I want to read it from the Message Bible. I love the King James Bible. That's where I get all of my revelation from. But I, this, this is unique for me. I want to read it from the Message Bible. 1 Samuel chapter 17, starting at verse number 38. Then Saul outfitted David as a soldier in the army. He put his bronze helmet on his head and his belt, his sword over his armor. David tried to walk, but he couldn't hardly budge. David told Saul, I can't even move with all this stuff on. I'm not used to this. And he took it all off. Then David took his shepherd's staff. He selected five smooth stones from the brook. He put them in his, the pocket of his shepherd's pack. And with that slingshot in his hand, he ran toward Goliath. Indulge me today as we dive into what some may seem to be an elementary passage of Scripture. As a matter of fact, this is probably the most famous story told historically, not just biblically. So while I have you for the next few moments, I want to talk from this particular subject, equipped for the battles. Equipped for the battles. You can take your seats. Equipped for, equipped for ah, the battles. Equipped for the battles. One thing I can guarantee in this house or online that you fall into one of these three categories. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a Democrat. I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're black. I don't care if you're white. I don't care if you're Asian, Hispanic. You fall in one of these three categories. You're in a battle. You're getting ready for a battle. Or you're coming out of one. You're in a battle. <laughs> I'm about to say, I'm in one right now, Pastor. <laughs> I'm getting ready for a battle. <laughs> or I'm coming out of a battle. But here's what I found out with battles. They don't all work together. I can be coming out of a battle with my health while getting ready to go into a battle with my finances. I've learned that they don't work simultaneously. I can be absolutely happy in one area and in another area of my life catching hell like I've lost my mind. That is the fight. That is the battle that we got to deal with because somewhere along the line, I'm trying to figure out, God, what in the world is going on? Because you need to be equipped for every phase of the battle. You need, you need to be equipped. Somebody shout, I need to be equipped. As a matter of fact, it is, it is, it is in the writing where he says, I will not have you ignorant of the devices of the enemy. So God wants you to know the devil's tools, but he will keep him ignorant of your tools. God will hide the tools that you have from the devil so you can become a better you. I can prove it to you. First Corinthians chapter two, verse number eight. They said, if they had known what would happen for them crucifying Jesus, they wouldn't have done it. And then it says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men, the things that God has revealed to our spirit. But by the spirit of God, which means who Jesus was going to become was hidden from the enemy. I could pause right there and just shout all by myself. Sometimes God will protect you by hiding you. And you're mad because you're trying to figure out, God, I want to come out like everybody else. God said, no, 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 baby. Let me take you through a season of hiding you. Because there are some tools in your life that I have to bring out of you. And that now, that's now become the most frustrating thing is, what do I do? Because I'm equipped with so much. And what do I do with this? Because this is a divine moment. This, this, is, this, is, this is David and Goliath, y'all. We know how David wins the battle. This is, this is David, this is Goliath, this is David. This is more than David and Goliath. Wait a minute, 
this is a divine moment. Huh. This, we spend so much time talking about David and Goliath and divine moment, not realizing that this is a process that David has to go through to become king. <laughs> this, this now is the process that David can become the king. Catch this, because in a moment David was anointed the king, but it takes him years to become the king. Okay, I'm going to say it again. He was anointed the king in a moment, but he didn't become the king until years later. Okay, let me, let me make it make sense for you. Let me, let me make it make sense for you. You can get married on June 3rd. That don't make you a husband and wife when you get married. It takes you years before you become a husband. Okay, okay, okay. You think because you got married, you became the perfect husband? I can make it even plainer. Because you gave birth. On whatever date your child was born, you think I became a mother. No, your birthing made you a mother, but you didn't become a mother until years and years and years and years and years and years later. See, y'all got to help me right here. Here's why I got a problem. When people come tell me they got a new baby, I wouldn't have did that to my kids. Child, you got a newborn. You ain't went through nothing but some diapers. Don't tell me until your child gets 16, 17 years old when you got to figure out, is he coming home tonight? Is he going crazy? Don't, 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 don't talk to me about how to raise my child. You ain't even have no children. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> because I thought once my boys were born, oh, I'm a daddy now. Oh, I, I realized, hold on, hold on, hold on. It was years later. I became that. But I had to walk through the process of becoming it. So please don't confuse the fact that God anointed you to do something that you're supposed to be doing it right now. Okay, 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 okay. See, see, we get, we get it confused. We think, oh, because he's anointed the king, so I got to start walking in kingship. No, 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 no. Once you get anointed the king, go back and take care of them sheep. It, it's, because okay, God gives David a promise. He gives him a promise. And for some of you in here, God gave you a promise. He anointed it for you. He said it belongs to you. You're happy it belongs to you. As a matter of fact, if I tell you to play that organ, we'll shout because God got a promise for me. If I start telling you right now, God's going to deliver the promise. Watch this, y'all. The same God of the promise is the same God of the process. <laughs> so if you can shout over a promise, you should be able to shout over a process. God, no matter what I got to go through, I'm not concerned about the promise. Make everything you need to make out of me. If I got to go through something, if I have to deal with something, whatever you need, God. Because I understand these light afflictions are but for a moment, which carries a fall. Wait, we got to figure out, wait a minute. The same God of the promise is the same God of the process which means there's a process before you can get to the promise. And maybe it's going to take some time. So catch this. We spend so much time talking about David and Goliath. Church, that's not the only battle in this text. <laughs> there's more than one battle that's happening in this scripture. So if you only think David and Goliath is the fight, you miss the process of becoming who he is. As a matter of fact, 1 Samuel, let's walk the text, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Verse number 17 says this. It talks about his, he says, David, 1 Samuel 17 to 17. One day, Jesse told David, his son, take these cracks of wheat, take these 10 loaves of bread, Take these 10 blocks of cheese. I didn't what the text say. That's my paraphrasing. Take these 10 blocks of cheese. Take the bread to the soldiers. Take the cheese to the captains. Here it is. And he says, and tell me what's happening. And we would think David is doing just wonderful because he's doing what his father told him. But catch this. Here's battle number one in the text. He's battling to serve after being rejected.
We're happy because David is obeying Jesse. But do you know Jesse rejected David? There's a historical event that you know of that takes place in the house. Samuel comes and says, there's a king in your house, Jesse. Bring me all your sons. Jesse brings all the sons but David. And the only person that has ears in the house is Samuel and the oil. Samuel said, your first son come, Eliab. Nothing's happening because the oil ain't listening. Nothing ain't happening. He said, is this all you have? Jesse said, well, I do have one more. He out there serving. Park right there for just one second. He's not in the house doing nothing. He's outside serving. God says, you might be seen as seem as though you're going under the radar, but baby, keep on serving because I'm about to call you into the house. I'm going to let you bypass everybody else to take the text says, Samuel said, we're going to sit right here until you bring the one you rejected into the house. David walks in the house. Catch this, because you got to go with me, the law of gravity. David walks into the house. Saul says, God, I mean, Samuel says, this is the one. This, this is the one. He turns the horn upside down and the oil flows. Hold on, hold on. When he turned around the other times, why did it never flow? Oil will only flow when you're in the right position. Oil don't care about your title. Oil don't care how good you look. Oil say when you get in the right place, I'll pour it all on you. That's why I ain't gotta prove nobody, be validated by nobody. All I have to do is be in the right place. There's something about being in the right place. Catch this, catch this, y'all. It's about being in the right place. It's not being under the right title. Because you could be under a title in the wrong place. And the oil says, when the rejected walks in, he's accepted. When the one that everybody looked over walked in, He's accepted. But let me make sure I get that same shout when I make this next statement. Because in verse 17, the Bible says David serves Jesse in spite of what happened to him. Can you still serve when the leader don't call your name? Can you still serve? Church hurt? Baby, I don't care about no church hurt. Maybe God is trying to tell you you need to serve in spite of people talking about you. Because I don't care what they say about me, I'm going to keep on serving. I'm going to keep on serving. They talk about me. So what? I'm going to keep on serving. They say they don't like me. I don't care. That's their problem, not mine. I'm going to keep on serving. They're going to reject me. I don't care. I'm going to keep on serving. Because watch this. God's going to validate me in front of the people who rejected me. And some of you all are wasting your time trying to prove to people you're successful now. Baby, just let the oil flow. Just let the oil flow. Just let the oil flow. I told my wife told me this one day and I told her she is so arrogant. I couldn't believe she said that. She was so arrogant. I said, what? I said, what you gonna do when you walk in the room? She said, what do you mean? She said, when I walk in the room, I take over a room. I said, with your old arrogant self, what is you talking about? She talking about, what are you talking about? Watch this, my aura. My oil say I don't have to be like everybody else. Catch this. Oh, that's gonna make me shout. Catch this, y'all. And she said this, this blew my mind. And she said, my oil don't take another lady all away. But when I know who I am, but when you know who you are, you don't let no devil in hell stop you from. There's a battle that's happening. You think this is just about David and Goliath? You're missing the battle. Battle number one, you got to fight past rejection and still serve. That's enough to preach. All by itself 
Can you fight past the fact that people got a problem with you? They got a problem with you. They got, have you ever been in a place in your life you don't even know why they don't like you? Can I, can I be Ebony? I ain't even much did nothing to you. Oh, you don't, you don't like me now because of what I got? Baby, wait till God really give me what he got promised for me. You don't like me now. Wait till the oil starts showing. Baby, you don't like me when I'm a shepherd? Wait till I become the king. <laughs> it is, it is. It is for us to understand. Y'all sit down. Somebody behind you can't see. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Sit down, sit down. So they can't see. It is, it is the understanding that this is not the only battle that's happening with David and Goliath. There's another battle that's happening that if you're not careful, you'll miss it. Verse number 28. I'm still in chapter 17. I have not left from chapter 17 of 1 Samuel. The Bible says Eliab, his older brother, heard David fraternizing with the men. He lost his temper and said, what are you doing here? Why aren't you minding your own business? Tending to that little flock of sheep you got. I know what you want to do here. You coming down here trying to see what's happening. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This, this is Eliab. This is the same Eliab that saw me get anointed. Huh. This is the same Eliab that saw what God did for me. And the Bible says, David replied, he said, all I did was ask you a question. But here's what's critical. Then the Bible says, he ignores his brother, turns to somebody else, and he asks him the same question to get an answer. Here's battle number two. You got to battle the opinion of others. David is battling the opinion of his brother. And so much so, he pinned it. He said, if it had been somebody else, I could have bore it. But it was you, the one who I let in my car. It was you. When you ain't have no money, I let you ride with me. It was you. When you didn't have nothing, I let you borrow some money. And now all of a sudden, you turn your back on me? It is you. It is a battle getting past the opinion of others. I know, I know, I know we don't want to talk about it because my brothers should have been supportive. They should have been supportive. But here's, here's the generational curse. Here's the generational curse. Here's what Eliab does. He tries to resurrect the spirit of inadequacy. Your father thought you wasn't nothing. He didn't invite you in. So now the brother repeats the father's business. Why are you down here? You don't have no business down here. That sounds like daddy again. Why are you in this house? You don't have no business in this house. Why, why are you down here? Here's what's crazy. He repeats what his father does, but he does it in a whole other way. <laughs> this is one of the most frustrating things in the world, trying to help people who want to tear you down. Okay, okay, okay. Here's why, here's why I say it's frustrating. It's not frustrating helping the person. Because the person wants to tear you down. That's fine. I have no problem with that. That's your own idiosyncrasies, your problem with God. That's, that's, that's between you. You can try to tear me down. I, this is my problem. My problem is why you think God got to subtract from me to add to you. God does not have to subtract from me to add to you. He's the God of more than enough. If he did it for me, he'll do the same thing for you. So why in the world are you trying to tear me down so you can become a step and step on me? And I am tired of people thinking God has to take away from me to add to you, knowing that the God that we serve says, I'll give it for you, I'll bless you, I'll bless you, I'll bless you. And God says, I still won't run out because our father owns a cattle upon a thousand hills. Church, you don't have to talk somebody down to build you up. Come on, online. Come on. No, no, no. I'm, you, we we got to be through with that season. You got to tell other people down to think God got to add to you. It doesn't happen that way. 
God says, okay, you think I'm deficient. You don't think I'm more than enough to bless your neighbor? You don't think I'm more than enough to bless everybody on your row? As a matter of fact, I am declaring that God's going to bless everybody on your row. I'm declaring God's going to bless everybody that's watching this broadcast. And I don't care if somebody get mad. They don't deserve to get blessed. That's your problem, not mine. Because God is not taking away from me to add to you. Somebody touch somebody, tell them, add, 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 add. God is adding to you. God, God is adding to you. God, God is... It's, it's, he's adding to you. But it's, but it's frustrating because they're trying to tear you down. And here's what Eliab does. Eliab does the first thing that people do, typically, who don't understand you now. He reminds them of what he used to do. <sighs> Why are you not back there taking care of them sheep? You, you don't... You, you don't see who I am right now. You, you are so caught up in 1990. You are so caught up in 2000. You're so caught up that you don't know what I evolved to be, that the only thing you see is what I used to be. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but God said you need to find you a new circle if all they do is remind you of what you used to do. Don't remind, matter of fact, move on. What are we doing? Move on. Oh, why, why are we still here? Yeah, we had a good time. Yeah, we were stupid. Why are we still having that conversation? If all you got to talk about is yesterday, you need to stay stuck in yesterday. Baby, but I walk in the future, me. And since I know that's a better me, that's ahead. You stay back there with who I used to be. Don't you, don't you see the opportunity in front of you? You don't, you don't see the opportunity in front of you. You're missing it. You, you, Eliab, you're missing it. But here's what I love. I love, I love what David does. Duh, David does what I want to anoint all of you to do. Don't argue with fools. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't mean that in a negative way. But can I, can I, can I make this statement? Uh, stop arguing with fools. Because they'll bring you to their level and beat you down with experience. <laughs> a fool will bring you to their level and then beat you down with experience. And you're wondering why you're so frustrated. Who was I talking to today? Who took my energy today? Was I talking to somebody I shouldn't have been talking to? Who should I ignore in this new season of my life? What phone call should I not have picked up? Because I've been dealing with too much. Why am I so tired? No, 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 no. I've been arguing with somebody who... <laughs> See, there's more than one battle that's happening here. This is not about David and Goliath. If I told you you got to learn how to battle, how do you serve after being rejected? The other one is how do you serve or how do you battle dealing with the opinion of others? But I'm not done, because even in battle number two, there's something that's happening that I want all y'all to realize. David says, he looked at his brother, and he turns from him. The text says, he ignores him. He didn't respond properly, so he ignores him. I'm not arguing with you, he, he ignores him. But then I thought about David. David's from the lion, from the tribe of Judah. David is a lion. David is a lion. And lions don't respond to dogs barking. When I know who I am, baby, you can bark at me all you want to because you ain't got nothing to do with where God is trying to take me. And I'm not wasting my roar on you. I'm not wasting my voice on you. I ain't wasting my roar. As a matter of fact, bye-bye, click. Bye-bye, click, delete, delete, because I'm not. I'm, I'm not wasting. You know how much it costs me to waste my roar? What does it look like when a lion is roaring at a dog? 
You're not even a threat to my future. As a matter of fact, woe unto me for wasting my roar on you when I should have just kept on walking. And I'm talking to somebody today. God says, I anoint you to keep on walking. I don't care because they barking at you. I don't care because they say, run, 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 run. Baby, please, I, get, get, get out of here. Yeah, yeah, run, get, 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 get out of here because your bark can't do nothing to me. You know who I am? I'm from the lion, from the tribe of Judah. Baby, my praise is my roar. My walk is my roar. There's something on the inside of me. Oh! I'm a roarer! I want to I wanna show you something. When a dog barks, it may be heard at the next house. When a dog barks, you may hear it on the next block. But when a lion opens his mouth, when she opens her mouth and roar, it said it can be heard two miles away. What if I told you the roar that you make today? God is sending into the future and said, eyes have not seen. Roar! Okay, okay. I got a roar. I got a roar on the inside. I can't respond to dog barking. There's a roar on it. I got to get through this. I think I just gave you a revelation of the importance of your voice. Their bark is insignificant. The Bible says, David, turns and ignores him. What would happen in your life if the people you thought should have been helping you, you just turn and ignore them? It's not because they're not family. It's just because you can't help my future. Look at I gotta show you, I gotta show you. I gotta show you, I gotta show you. Come on, come on, because this is not the only battle. Not only do you have to battle with being rejected, not only do you have to battle the opinion of others, there's another battle that's in here. And I know I'm talking to some roarers in here. The text says in verse number 34, the Bible says, David said, I've been a shepherd tending the sheep. But my father, whenever a lion or a bear comes to take my flock, to take what I've been covering, I go after it. I told you I think I'm talking to some lion. He said, I'm somebody shot, I'm going after it. He said, I would go after it, I would knock it down to rescue the lamb. And when it turned on me, I'll grab it by the throat. I'll wring his neck and I'll kill it. Catch this, lion or bear, it don't make no difference. It, the diff, it doesn't matter. He says, I'll kill it and I'll do the same thing to this Philistinian pig who is taunting the troops of God alive. Catch this, there's another battle. The battle to get past opposition. There's a battle to get past opposition. The opposition is this. The opposition isn't the lion or the bear. The opposition is he has to convince the king that I can fight this fight. I know you're looking at the outward me, but don't confuse the outward me with the inward me. Don't, don't confuse. Don't, don't get it twisted. I know some of you look at the size I am now. Don't get it twisted. There's a bigger me on the inside. There's something else on the inside of me. 
And he says, I know, King, you're looking at the outside, but let me give you my resume. Let me, let me give you my resume. But here's, here, here's the opposition. God created a problem, and he created David to solve the problem. So God will create a problem that's only designed for you to solve. See, see, I don't think they got it. You got it. God will create a problem that you're crying about. And God says, you're crying about what I created you to kill. Somebody shout, kill it. Put it in the comment, kill it. He said, I created this. I know it's the opposition, but you got to fight past the opposition. Because really what's happening is really an opportunity in disguise. <sighs> he says, this is an opportunity in disguise. Oh, this, is, this is a little antiquated for some of you. And for some of you seasoned mothers and fathers, you know what I'm getting ready to say. God is getting ready to reward you publicly for what you did privately. Okay. See, that's, that's, that's a little old school right there. See, because everybody wants public, public, make, make my name, say my name, tell me what, no, 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 no. God says, I'm looking for somebody who did something privately, and I'm about to reward you publicly. Here it is. Somebody shout, prove it, pastor. There is no audience when David kills the lion and the bear. There is no audience. The only thing David has to prove that he did it is a dead body. <laughs> he has a carcass. <laughs> he said, I didn't need to do that in front of everybody. Because God says, I'm trying to build you privately before I expose you publicly. So you got to learn how to battle past the opposition and think nobody don't like me. Nobody don't see me. I go home by myself. I eat by myself. No, maybe God is building you by yourself. So when it's time for you to come out, you don't need the approval of others so God can prove who you should be. Matter of fact, to all my single women, God, let me help you right here. Stop waiting on a man to take you out. Baby, take yourself out. Go to your own finest restaurant. Watch this, because here's what you do. You created a standard for yourself. So when you create a standard for yourself, you know what you won't accept and what you will accept. Because David now knows. He says, I can beat this Philistine because of my private battles. And I didn't need an audience. You about to tell me what I did. I am so thankful for people telling me they love my preaching. I thank you for that. I am so thankful for I God bless you. But I bet you one thing, I was doing this to empty seats. When I had seven people in Jacksonville, Florida, believe in God, God filled the room. He said, preach to an empty seat, because one day you're going to stand in a place but baby, that nobody knew. And nobody will get credit, but me. do it with no audience. So when the audience comes, you don't stop what you're already doing. I haven't changed how I preach. I was doing this to an empty room. <laughs> That's why I love my spiritual father. I was doing this when nobody was there. And I was jumping around. They were like, Pastor, you are like the room full. I say it is. Because you don't see what I see. Because I know where God is taking me. And I'm not preaching to my present. I'm preaching to my future. But now, uh, can I be real with y'all? Can I bring somebody shout, be real? In the comments, put be real. Uh, I gave you three battles. But there's also something in this battle for David. See, some of y'all think that David is fighting because he's just killing Goliath. That's fine. He's trying to kill Goliath in verse 38. 
But in verse 25, the text says, he says, the king says, whoever kills this giant, I'm going to give him riches. He's going to marry my daughter. And I'm going to set his family free from debt in Israel. Okay, okay, okay. You missed it. I missed it too. I know, see, we read past that. We go to the slingshot in the rock. Hold on one second. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. See, y'all better realize it's something in this battle that's coming out of this. I ain't fighting for nothing. Something, God is about to give me something for what I've been fighting over. God's about to show me something. He says, I'm going to show you in the text. The text says, he says, I'm going to give you riches. He changes his finances in one battle. He changed, watch this, he didn't change his finances in one night. Dr. Oscar, he changed it in one fight. And the truth be told, he didn't change it in order for it to be a fight. There had to be blows thrown. He really didn't change it in one fight. He changed it in one rock. Okay, 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 okay. It didn't even take all five. It only took one. I want to stop right here and tell somebody today, God said, it ain't going to take all five you need. He said, it's going to take one praise. It's just going to take one victory. It's just going to take one, and things are going to change in your favor. It's just going to take one thing, and it's... Somebody shout, just one. Put it in the comment, just one. Hold on, hold on. That's not it. He says, you're going to marry my daughter. Hold on, y'all. Wait a minute. Let's get this. The king says, you're going to marry my daughter. That's covenant. Which means if anything happens to the king, I'm probably next in line. So God says, I'm bringing you into covenant after this one battle. I'm bringing you into covenant after this next fight. I'm bringing you into covenant. He said, wait a minute. That's not it. He said, that's all I'm going to give you. He says, and I'm going to set your house free from the debt of Israel. Okay, okay. I missed it the first time too. Uh, he said, I'm going to set your house free. Okay, okay. That is a generational curse being broken. Oh, I'm about to shout on this stage all by myself. He said, after this next victory, your family bloodline is going to be set free. After this next shout, your family bloodline, what the enemy meant for evil, God is turning it for them. Pastor Robinson, and then it hit me. I got it. Goliath was fighting for property. David was fighting for purpose. And some of you are fighting for stuff, and God said, you better start fighting for purpose. There better be something. That's it, as a matter of fact. It, it, this, this is my declaration to the devil. If it ain't nothing in it for me, I ain't fighting you. What? what? Me, me fighting you, what I'm gonna get from it? A headache? No, you keep that, brother. No, no, you keep that. You keep, wait a minute, wait a minute. If I whoop you, you gonna bless my family? Okay, let's fight. Let's go. Let's, 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 let's get it in. Let, catch this, because all of this is a battle. This is not just about David and Goliath. This is the process that we run from. Because remember, I told you, the God of the promise is the same God of the process. So, David is fighting for something. But y'all, there's another battle that's in this text that oftentimes if we're not careful, we'll miss it. In verse number 38, now I'm in verse number 38. That was my introduction. Verse 38 says, then Saul outfitted David as a soldier in the army. 
he put his bronze helmet on his head, a belt of his sword around his armor. David tried to walk, but he couldn't hardly budge. This is a battle that I'm getting ready to tell you that most people lose. You got to learn to fight the battle of comparison. The battle of comparison. It's in the scripture. It's the battle of comparison. Because here's what happened. Saul said, well, since you're going to fight, let me compare you to my other soldiers. Let me give you what they need. And the problem with comparison yourself to others, somebody will give you what they need, but it ain't what you need. The Bible says, David, he puts it on. He said, but I can't. I can't move. My question to you is who has put something on you that you can't move? You can't even walk in the fullness of your anointing because you just had to date him. You can't walk into what God told you because you wanted to date her so bad. Because you made the decision and the decision you make because who puts on your outfit determines your outcome. Saul, Saul put something on me that made me stuck. Church, what has you stuck? David identifies the problem. He says, don't compare me to what you used to. Because I know you the king, but king, what you gave me, I can't move. Where are you in your head? And what year are you stuck? What did they do to you that has you stuck? I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm telling you it happened. I'm telling you it's wrong for happening. I'm telling you what happened to you when you were a little girl. When you little, I'm telling you it's wrong. But it's also wrong for keeping you stuck. David said, I can't wear it. Catch this. Because where I'm going, it's going to hold me down. <laughs> and where you're going, if you weigh the abuse of what they did on you, I'm not telling you it didn't happen. I'm telling you that it was a preventative measure to try to keep you from moving on from what God has in store for you. You cannot compare yourself. And please let me say this. Stop using social media as a barometer of success. Stop looking at social media and say they are successful. God make me like them. What you're essentially saying is God make me like a clip that may not even be real, that's been edited. So what you're saying is, God, I want the edited version. Instead of God, make me who I am. No matter what hell I gotta go through. I'm not wearing this heavy stuff anymore. My life! <laughs> it's going crazy and I'm trying to figure this out. Because what I don't want is I don't want to carry yesterday's warfare it's about tomorrow's victory. Okay, okay. I got to hurry up. I got to get out of here. There's another battle. There's another battle. And we can stay right there. Verse number 39. Verse number 39. The Bible says, and David tried to walk, but couldn't hardly budge. So David told Saul, man, I can't even move with all this stuff on me. I can't move with all this on me. I'm not used to this. This is the battle. Well, I think everybody can be set free. The battle of shake it off. <laughs> kiss this, kiss this, kiss this. This is the text. He says, I can't wear this, I can't move. Then he shakes it off. <laughs> David said, what you gave me is not for me. That don't belong to me. 
I know you're only used to one caliber of warfare, but I can't use this, so I got to shake it off. Boy, can you imagine when you implement that in your life? I know they worked for you last season, but I'm in the season of my life now. Yeah, we were friends. Yeah, we were cool last year. Yeah, you were all right with me. But guess what? Check out this. Me shaking you off don't make you demonic. Me moving on don't make you evil. That just means where God is trying to take me. I can't wear last season equipment for what God is trying to do in my life. And I'm declaring. See, see church, uh, the, problem with, the problem with some of us is we're still trying to wear it. Can you imagine still trying to wear it? Still trying to put that on? Can you imagine still trying to be around fruitless people? You know they ain't produce no fruit, but you still. That's my friend. That's my homeboy. That's it. Listen, I tell you what. Let your homeboy be your homeboy. This is what I tell my homeboy. Listen, we cool now. I'm going to go off. Let me get myself together, and then I'm going to come back and get you. Because what I'm not going to do is keep all of us here stuck together. And your assignment was to stay. My assignment is to go. My, my assignment is, is to move on. Here, catch this. Catch this. Okay. Uh, I, I, I got to tell you this. Here's why, Dora, here's why I argue with God. Because God, you would seem as though he's supposed to wear that armor. Because that's, that's, that's what you wear to warfare. Until I read the scripture again. Wait a minute. David didn't use armor against the bear. The text says he used his hands. <laughs> he used not what was man-made. He used what was God-made. And I want to say something to somebody today. God says, stop taking man-made ideas to spiritual battles. Because what I'm getting ready to do in the next season of your life, you're going to need spiritual warfare. Okay, the text says, I got to borrow this, the text. The text says he uses his hands. He uses, he uses, he uses his hands. But I'm reading, I'm thinking, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. He's shaking it off, he uses his hands. And God said, what I don't want is I don't want you to be hindered using what somebody else used for victory. Because that's not going to work for you. So please forgive me. If I don't shout like everybody else shout, please forgive me if every now and then you may see me hop up or you may see me dance because you don't think, you have no idea what it took for me to stand right here and give God worship. As a matter of fact, you've heard it said, I've said before, somebody may tell you it don't take all of that. I'm sorry, boo, it may not take all of that for you, but as for me, it's going to take all of that and then some. Because if you think I'm bothering you now, give me about 10 more seconds and I'm about to get you out of my seat. Because when I think about what God is doing in my life, I'm about to... Get it. Oh, get it. Woo! Okay, 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 I got to get, I got to get, Woo! Woo! I got to get out of here. I told you, it's more than one battle here. It's, it's, more, it's more than one battle. Can I, can I introduce you to the last battle? See, my last battle is not David and Goliath. My last battle is not David and Goliath. My last battle is in verse number 40. In verse number 40, the Bible says, then David took his staff, selected five smooth stones. <laughs> he put the stones in his shepherd pack. He took his sling, and he took off toward Goliath. This is my battle. This is my last battle. See, I told you, you got to deal with rejection. You got to deal with opposition. You got to deal with shaking it off. 
You got to do it. But the last battle, lady, is something that's going to probably make you shout too. This is the last battle for all y'all. This is the battle to pick right. I'm, I'm going to say it again. The battle to pick right. <laughs> because I'm not going to bother this. I'm going to just throw this out here. Because if you've ever picked wrong, there's a season in your life that you just can't get back. So that's the battle, catch this. And for those who think I'm just talking about relationship, I'm not talking about relationships. David fights the battle, even though relationship does mean something. You better make sure you pick right. Fellas, you better get that. You better be here Saturday for breakfast. You better, you better pick right. Watch this, because when you pick right, she'll be a helpmate. Okay, okay. Ooh, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Here's why you have to pick right. Because the Bible says he grabs his shepherd's staff. He grabs his pack. And the text says he grabs five smooth stones. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. He, you, you, wait a minute. You, you grab your shepherd's stick. You grab your bag. You grab your five smooth stones. You grab your slingshot. I'm confused. I'm confused. Because you defeated the lion and the bear with your hands. Why can't you defeat Goliath with your hands? Catch this. You better get out of my message. God said, baby, this is a brand new battle. You can't use old equipment for a new battle. Your hands worked last season, but you got to pick right for this season. Okay. Okay. All right. The text says, he grabbed five Smooth stones. Let's not run past this. I'm not even talking about David being Goliath. Five smooth stones. But he grabs them out of a brook in the valley. Wait a minute. So God puts a river in the middle of a valley. And what you need is in the water. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not, I'm not going to bother that. Here's what I'm not going to bother that. Because if I start telling you what you need is in the water, uh, I'll get past my point when the text says he, he picks five smooth stones. Which using the adjective smooth, which means there were other type of rocks that was available. <laughs> rocks... Don't get smooth overnight. It takes time for the rough edges to come off. It don't happen overnight. Wait a minute. Is it possible that these rocks were getting prepared even before David was even born. <laughs> can, I, can I share this with you here and online? God is preparing your weapon. And you have no idea that he's working. Come here, seasoned saints. That's why I firmly believe you don't have to wait till the battle is over. You can shout right now. Here's why I can shout now, because I know God is working on something. I can't see it. I haven't made it to it yet. But what I do know is when I show up in the valley, he's going to provide rivers in the middle of a death. He says, you cannot take yesterday's equipment into tomorrow's battle. Mm. So, young man, I was asking God, didn't help me. He said, put the five smooths on, and he got the slingshot. My question is, David, where the slingshot come from? 
Remember I told you in the beginning, his daddy told him, take this basket of five, 10 loaves of bread, 10 blocks of cheese, and crack wheat. Take this to serve. Is it possible that David had a slingshot the entire time just in case something happened that he wasn't prepared for? Can I talk to somebody today? You better carry praise with you. Just in case something happened that you wasn't prepared for, you better carry worship with you just in case. Okay, okay. Here, here, here it is, and I'm done. Here it is, and I'm done. Here's why you don't think we'll take you with you. Can I use this anthropomorically? A metaphor, a metaphor. Uh, if it is the case, the Bible says he takes the slingshot, puts a rock in the slingshot, whips it, and throws it. That's the story you know. But answer for more, if I can use a metaphor. What if your mouth is representation of a slingshot? And God put a rock on the inside of you. And he says, every time you throw the rock at something that's bigger than you, okay, Okay, you, 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 you missed it. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Baby, my mouth is my slingshot. And every time I open it, there's a rock that's coming. Do me a favor, somebody shall throw your rock. Touch everybody around you can't say, throw your rock, throw. Throw your rock, baby, throw. Throw your rock, throw, 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 throw your rock. You have something on the inside of you. Throw your... Every time I open my mouth. Stay right there, stay right there. Catch this. The problem with some of us is we throwing our rock in the wrong direction. Oh, I wish I had time to deal with this. If you looked at what the armor that Saul had on, I'm sorry, that Goliath had on, if you look, if you knew what he was dressed in, there was only one place that was vulnerable. He had a sword. Watch this. He even had a man that ran before him with a shield. So Goliath didn't even carry his own shield. I can stop right there by itself. What happened when the enemy thought he had a shield? that was gonna block your rock. There was only one place that was made available, and it was his forehead. It was the only open spot that he could hit him. I wish for your next praise, you had what I like to call pinpoint accuracy. So this next praise, this next rock I throw, this isn't a general sling. I'm throwing this rock at the head of what's been trying to break my family down. I'm throwing this rock at every generational curse that tried to say my family wasn't gonna make it. I'm throwing this rock at every single thing that tried to tell me I was not gonna be anything. Oh, I'm throwing this rock at... Throw it, baby! Throw it! When you get to work tomorrow, and somebody go to acting stupid, just do this. They ain't gonna have no idea what you're talking about. 
But what I'm not going to do, I'm not going to waste my rock on somebody that's not a Goliath. I'm not going to waste my rock. Do, do me a favor. Don't do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. If I have any lions in here that's ready to throw their rocks into the next season of their life, can I get all of my rock throwers to run down to this altar and give God the best praise like I'm throwing my rock at my future. I'm throwing my rock at it. Everything I've been dealing with, all the hell I've been catching, baby. Throw it, throw it. <laughs>